For one month now, this is the fourth week, we've been going on a journey. We've been looking at the life of Isaac in the book of Genesis, chapter 26. And we've uh, covered a whole lot of things, you know, during uh, the times that we have been studying under the uh, auspices of the leadership of our pastor. So this morning, um, we are standing upon God's promises. And God's promises is yea and amen. Every single word that God speaks in our lives will come to pass. Every word that he has declared will come to pass. Words of men may fail, but God's word will never fail. So whatever he has said in his word is going to come to pass. So we began the series three weeks ago, like I said, this is the fourth week, uh, with a discussion on God's renewal of the Abrahamic covenant with Isaac um, God's blessing and God's blessing upon Isaac's uh, obedience in staying in the land of Canaan. And we looked at different points as we studied this under uh, uh, when our pastor was uh, preaching. Two weeks ago, we also discussed God's, uh, uh, God, how God blessed Isaac's hard work with so much success that the Philistines felt threatened by him and asked him to leave them. The Lord will bless you to the point that people will see you and they will say, who is this person? Praise the Lord. God did it in the time of old. He's doing it today. So as God did it in the life of Isaac, God will lift you up. He said that he will lift us, for, us from what? From the, from the dunghill and place us what? In the place of princes. If you're a child of God, you are a prince. You are a queen. You're a princess in the house of God. Praise the Lord. And you should see yourself as such because God will transform your life and he will uplift you in Jesus' name. Last week, we discussed how Isaac dealt with opposition he faced from the Philistines. So that God will bless us does not mean opposition will not come. Opposition will come, but God will cause us to transcend over those oppositions. God will cause us to succeed over those oppositions. God will place us in the place of princes and the devil will not be able to dominate us despite his oppositions in our lives in Jesus' name. So he wasn't discouraged, uh, uh, with the, the, with the, discouraged by the opposition. He didn't retaliate against the resistance and he allowed God to grow him spiritually through the opposition that he faced. He faced opposition. God uses oppositions to mold us. God uses oppositions to transform our lives. God uses oppositions that comes to us to move us from grace to grace, to move us from glory to glory. Because when we pass the test, we move into our testimony. When we pass any kind of challenge that we are having, the Lord changes our lives. So through that opposition, through the pressure comes even the promise. Through the pressure that we are going through in our lives, God refines us. He makes us even come out brighter, just like you pass gold. When you pass gold through the fire, what happens? All the impurities are what? They are burnt off. Praise the Lord. So the Lord, through our positions, will burn off the impurities in our lives in Jesus' name. So the message that we are going to, today we are looking at how Isaac, you know, became a light to the nations and how we can emulate him to be a light in this world with Jesus working in our lives in Jesus' name. So we are going to look at the topic of the message today, a light to the nations. A light to the nations. Genesis chapter 26 is our text that we have been taking. I'm going to read from verse 26. If you will join me, please. From verse 26 to uh, verse 33, I'm going to read. Then Abimelech came to him from Gera with Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Phicol, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, why have you come to me? Since you hate me and have sent me away from you. And they said, we have certainly seen people will see you. We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. The Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing to you but good. And have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. You will be the blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made a feast. And they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another. And Isaac sent them away. 
and they departed from him in peace. It came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug. And he said, uh, and, and said to him, we have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this message is the light, the light, a light to the nations, a light to the nations. will become light to our nation and the nations of the world in Jesus' name. To understand this message, I've divided it into four subheadings, and the subheadings are these. You are the light of the world. I thought somebody would say amen. I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Second point is our conduct is our light. Third point is our light is our witness. Fourth point is the nations will see our light in Jesus' name. The nations will see our light. First point, you are the light of the world. Second point, our conduct is our light. Third point, our light is our witness. And the fourth point, the nations will see our light. Let's quickly get into the first point. So you are the light of the world. Jesus Christ said, we know where that came from. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to verse 16. The Bible says there, you are the light of the world. The city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Isaac was a light to the nations of his days. What was the source of the light in his life? What was the source of the light in Isaac's life? So what made Isaac's light shine so brightly to the nations? We can see it in the Abrahamic covenant that he was connected to. His father, Abraham, had a covenant with God. Abraham obeyed God to the point that God became his friend. And because of that, we are able to key into that particular blessing that he promised unto Abraham. And that was what happened to Isaac. Isaac was keyed in. He was plugged into the Abrahamic covenant and that was the source of his light. His source of his light came from God. So we see in the Abrahamic covenant, which is a contract and agreement uh, with the source of all light, which is God. Abraham had a contract with God. Abraham had a contract and God blessed his generations because of that. And Isaac was the second patriarch to be a benefactor of that Abrahamic covenant, which is the source of his light. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 3 to 5. The Bible says there, dwell in this land. He was giving Isaac a command because there was a famine in the land. There was a famine, there was a problem in the land and he was already on his way down to Egypt and God told him that he should stop over in Gera because he didn't want him to go over to Egypt. So Genesis chapter 26 verse 3 to 5. The Bible says, dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath, the covenant, which I swore to Abraham, your father. So because of Abraham's obedience, because of the blessing that was upon Abraham's obedience, Isaac became a benefactor of the Abrahamic covenant. Verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham what? Abraham obeyed my voice. That is a powerful thing when we obey God. God is thrilled by our obedience. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Praise the Lord. So the source of Isaac's light is due to this Abrahamic covenant that he became a benefactor to because he became the second patriarch and the first child of Abraham to come from Sarah. He was connected to the source of all lights through this Abrahamic covenant. Praise the Lord. And then another second point here is because we are looking at what is the source of Isaac's light. He had a strong affinity to the source. Isaac had a strong affinity to the source. Bond builds obedience. Bond builds obedience. Obedience cultivates blessings. 
blessings from God radiate his goodness for all to see. That is what happened in his life. He had a strong affinity with the source. And who is the source? The source is God. Let us see Genesis chapter 26 and verse 2. The Bible says there, Genesis 26 and verse 2. And the Lord appeared to him. I will stop there. The Lord appeared to him because he had an affinity with him. He had a connection with God. God's draws, when, the Bible says when we draw near to God, what does he do? He draws near to us. You draw near to him, he draws near to you. And we see that Isaac was someone that had a connection and an understanding about God. Because when he was small, remember when they went to the mountain with Abraham? When Abraham was walking in the obedience of God because God said, go and slay your only son Isaac, the one that will be the, the, your, the, the, that you said that all the generations you know, of the earth is going to be blessed through, through him. Go and sacrifice him. And already, Abraham already sacrificed him in the altar of his heart. And he started going. He didn't tell the wife though, because if he told the wife that was going to, there was going to be a lot of problem. I see Pastor I I am I am Pastor. I just as soon as I said that he, he just I the wife. Praise the Lord. Because you not tell that kind of message to a wife. Oh, we are going to go and sacrifice Jaden and we are going up into the mountains. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, Sister Kelchi will cause commotion everywhere. So so that that well, that wasn't what happened. So the Lord appeared to him, appeared to Isaac. So Isaac already had that notion because he was going to be the lamb of sacrifice. Because he asked himself, where is the lamb of sacrifice? The Lord will provide the lamb of sacrifice. And when he got there, he tied him up like a goat and put him upon the altar. And I was about to kill him and the angel held his hand because he would have killed him because he had that conviction that this child will not die even if I kill him. Even if I behaved like all the people in the land in those days, because there was a lot of sacrifice that was going on in those days, I believe that the Lord will resurrect him. So that was his faith. And because of that, Isaac was seeing all these things. So he had witness of it. So he had a connection and affinity with the source. He understood God in some way. And the Lord appeared to him in verse 26, chapter 26 and verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. James chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible says, James 1 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Isaac must have remembered that in the time that he was about to become the sacrifice, he was going to be that Christmas goat that they were going to sacrifice. What happened? The angel stopped and the angel provided. And God provided what? A lamb that was caught by the ticket. Symbolic of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. That took his place. That took his place like Jesus Christ. That became the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And has become a replacement for us. Because the wages of sin is dead. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Isaac was a representation of mankind. Mankind, you are supposed to die because of sin that is in you. But Jesus became the what? Lamb of sacrifice that replaced. So G Isaac was seeing all this thing. He had a strong affinity to the source. Every good gift. James 1.17. And every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights. With whom... There is no variation, no mistake, no shadow of turning. He remains the same. Human beings, we have variations. That is why you have Lean Six Sigma that studies variations and all those kind of stuff. But God does not have any mistake in him. No variation in him. So, because of that, he is also the father of lights. And Isaac was connected to that source. So, God drew close to Isaac. He is the father of all spiritual light. Isaac began to embody the light by associating closely with God, the creator of all, source of all light. We saw in the past weeks that at the beginning of this journey, Isaac was acting by human rationality and logic, but God kept on transform him, transforming him through the opposition, through the challenges, through the pitfalls, through the gaps. He kept on transforming him and changing him. So his close affinity to the father of lights made the patri patriarch Isaac a light to the world in his days. Praise the Lord. 
we'll go to second point. Second point, our conduct is our light. Our conduct is our light. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 26, the Bible says, Then Abimelech came to him from Gera with Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Phicol, the commander of his army. So a Targum, uh, one of the ancient texts, said that Abimelech, the name, is a, is, a, is a title, just like you have a president or something like that. And FICO was the name of a title for the commander of their army. And he came with an entourage, a big entourage, to come and meet Isaac. So during the conflict, during the conflict with the Philistines in Gera, Isaac's conduct made a great impression on the Philistines that they came to him to make overtures of peace. So during the conflict with the Philistines in Gera, Isaac's conduct made a great impression on them, made an impression on, on the king and all the people and everything. And they came to him to beg for peace. Praise the Lord. So our conduct is our light. You could see that the conduct of Isaac was something that became a form of witness and started drawing people to God. Praise the Lord. So our conduct is our life. So what is conduct? I've been saying conduct, conduct, conduct. What is conduct? Conduct is our behavior. It is how we manage ourselves. So when you say somebody's conduct or behaves this way, it's just how somebody manages themselves, how they carry themselves, how they behave. It's just somebody's behavior. We can agree that Isaac conducted himself appropriately around the Philistines and that it became a point of witness to them and the nations that are around them. A Thomas Carlyle, a Scottish essayist, historian and philosopher, he said something. He said, conviction is worthless unless it is converted into conduct. You can have a conviction that you're a child of God. You can say, I believe in God, but if it is not converted into your conduct, it's useless. Because you become, you become a message yourself. When your life is transformed and God translates you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of this marvelous life, your life has to be transformed. Your life has to be converted. Your conviction is worthless, according to Thomas Carlyle. He said your conviction is worthless unless it is converted into conduct. So it's useless to say, I'm a Christian. And your conduct is not changed. Because your conduct becomes your witness. So you cannot say, I'm a child of God. And then you do not live like a child of God. So your conduct has to be transformed. So your covenant conviction and display as a Christian, they are all useless if you cannot convert it to your conduct or how you lead your life. So it would be best to ask the Holy Spirit to transform your conduct. Why? Your conduct is the light that witnesses to the world. It can lead people to heaven. It can lead people to hell. Praise the Lord. What must our conduct be? What must our conduct be? Our behavior or conduct, I'm going to say a lot of stuff. So if you are writing, I will advise you to write. So I'm going to say a lot of points here. What must our conduct be? Our conduct must be worthy of the gospel. Our conduct must be worthy of the gospel. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. Our conduct must be worthy of the gospel that we preach, the gospel that we live, the gospel that we have internalized, that has transformed us and translated us from the kingdom of darkness to God's kingdom of light. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, the Bible says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Christians should be Christ-like. That's what it's just saying. Christians should be Christ-like. They should become citizens of heaven, should behave accordingly. If you say, I am a child of God, behave accordingly. You cannot say, I am an ambassador to Saudi Arabia, and you come here and you are behaving like an American. You come to America and you behave like a Saudi. So you cannot say, um, I am an ambassador for Christ, but you are behaving like the people of the land. You have to behave like where you are coming from. You have to embody your president. 
You have to be a worthy ambassador because when you see the ambassador of Saudi Arabia, Arabia, you have seen uh, King Fad or whoever who he is. You have because he embodies him. He's an embodiment. So are you an embodiment of Jesus? God is seated on the throne. When you call yourself a Christian, I am a Christian, I am a Christian. Do you embody Jesus? Do you embody the citizenry that you are of? Or are you behaving like the people of the land? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we should be in practice what we are in position. So you should be in practice what you are in position. If you say your position is that you have been transformed and you have become Christ, uh, Christ-like by becoming a Christian, you should, your conduct must be worthy of the gospel. Praise the Lord. So, second point there is our behavior and conduct must be in wisdom, especially how we talk. It must be in wisdom, especially how we talk. Colossians chapter 4 from verse 5 and verse 6. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 to verse 6. The Bible says, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how we ought to answer each one praise the lord so in 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 our in in our everyday behavior we should realize that we are being carefully watched by unbelievers just like the people of the philistines they were watching who isaac they persecuted him they oppressed him but they were watching him and watching how he behaved. The same is true to us today. So our behavior and conduct must be in wisdom, especially how we talk, how we also live our lives. So concerning our talk, it must be courteous, humble, and Christ-like. Concerning our talk, it must be free from gossip, frivolity, uncleanness, and bitterness. Concerning our talk, it must be honest and without hypocrisy. Concerning our talk, it must be worthwhile and profitable. Just like when you are eating food, if the food, no matter how tasty it is, and it doesn't have salt, what is it? It is bland. So our talk must not be bland. It must not be dull. It must not be flat. It must not be insipid. But it has to be worthwhile and profitable. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our behavior and conduct must be what? In wisdom, especially to, in how we talk. And let's see Ephesians chapter 5 from, uh, from verse 15 to um, 17. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. The Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, which means carefully, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, walking circumspectly or carefully is to live in the light of our position as God's children. That's what it means. Walking circumspectly is to live in the light of our position as God's children. We must buy up the opportunities that we have as children of God and shine our light whenever we have uh, any situation that presents itself to us. So we need to find out on a daily basis, in the place of prayer, in the place of study, and in the place of service to God, what the will of God is. Just like uh, Paul told the Ephesians, he said, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is so that we can move according to his will and according to his plan. Praise the Lord. So we have looked at that second point. Our behavior and our conduct must be in wisdom, especially in the way we talk and in the way that we live our lives. So our behavior again, because we are saying that our our conduct is our 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 conduct is what our conduct is our 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 light, right? Our conduct is our light. So let us look at another point there. So our behavior must be what? Our behavior must be in the spirit of God. Our behavior must be in the spirit of God. Our conduct must be led by the spirit of God. Galatians 5 and verse 25. The Bible says there. Galatians 5 and verse 25. It says, if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. So if we are born in the spirit when you say you are born again being born again is being born in the spirit let us make it appear by the good fruits 
of the Holy Spirit showing in our lives. So if we say that we are children of God, the Spirit that gave birth to us in salvation, we need to embody His characteristics. And we see that in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our behavior, next point, our behavior, I have a lot to say because of our time. Our behavior uh, uh, or conduct must be holy. Our behavior or conduct must be holy. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 15, the Bible says, But as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. You need to be holy in your conduct. So we need to stop imitating the ungodly world and the fads and the fashions of this world. We must reproduce the sacred character of the one who has called us. Just like God is holy, we need to be holy. So we must be holy in what we do and what we say. We must strive for perfection because our God is holy. Jesus Christ, not I said, said it. He said, be ye what? Perfect. Because of what? Your heavenly Father is perfect. We strive for perfection because God is holy and we want to become like Him. Praise the Lord. So our behavior, the next point, we have seen holiness, we, our behavior and our conduct. The uh, previous one was that we have to walk in the Spirit and also now we have seen that we have to be holy. So our behavior and our conduct is our light and we must be respectful of God's house. We must be respectful of God's house. Our behavior or conduct must not be unruly. So what's that word unruly? If they start asking us what that word unruly means, what does it mean? It means not submissive. So we're looking at there has to be respect in the, in the sanctuary of God. There has to be order. We need to respect the leadership. We need to respect those that the Lord um, has placed in positions of leadership. So our behavior or conduct must not be unruly. And unruly means not submissive or conforming to rule, ungovernable, turbulent, intractable. I got interested when I was looking at that in the dictionary. I wanted to know what the word intractable means. Intractable means not easily controlled or directed, not docile or manageable, stubborn, obstinate. Another definition of unruly that I saw, it said is, it means refractory. Refractory, I got interested in that too. It says it's someone that is hard or impossible to manage, stubbornly disobedient, and lawless. Praise the Lord. May that, may that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So, our behavior and conduct must be respectful of God's house. First Timothy chapter 3 from verse 14 to 15. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to 15. The Bible says there, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God. What is the house of God? Which is the church of the living God. That's what the house of God is. The church of the living God, the pillar and ground. That's the pillar and foundation of the truth. So we are the pillar. The church of God is the pillar and the foundation of the truth. So we must conduct ourselves wisely in God's house. It is the church of the living God and the pillar and foundation of the truth here on earth. So what is another point? Our behavior or conduct must be appropriate in our relationships at home as Christian families. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible says there. In fact, when I was studying about this, this particular scripture, the way I was looking at it, this is something that you, you can study it for the next two weeks, three weeks, even more than that. He said, First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. He said, Wives, likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the world, that if you are ma if in those days in, in current, in those days, well, not in current, in the time that Peter was writing, the people he was writing to, there, could, there might have been people in this place, women that had given their lives to Christ, but their husbands, maybe Romans, you know, they had not given their lives to Christ. He said that they telling the women that they needed to be submissive to their husband, that even if they do not speak or trying to preach, that their lives should become a testament to their husbands that without a word, that they may win those people over. The Bible says they may be won by, their, by the conduct of their wives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a lot that one can say about this, but uh, I'm not going to dabble into a lot of it. But God also gives a commandment even to husbands also. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, the Bible says, Husbands, do what? 
Love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our behavior and conduct, not only in the house of God, because if, whether you will believe it or not, the Christian, the traditional Christian, Judeo-Christian Judeo family life of a man marrying a woman is under severe attack, whether you believe it or not. And I will not withdraw that statement because it's the truth. The devil is fighting it because the devil understands that if he can inf in step into the nuclear family, destroy Christian homes, it will be destabilized. They will not be focused to serve. But when they are born, the Bible says that what? One person will chase what? A thousand. And two will chase what? Ten thousand. So when the devil is fighting the, the traditional Christian home, he's doing so, so that he can crush it, so that we are not focused, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, despised all the shame, and is, is there, seated at the right hand side of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our conduct, we must be very careful. Our conduct in our homes, we need to make sure that our conduct is fashioned by what the word of God says. Praise the Lord. So appropriate our conduct and our behavior at home uh, must be appropriate as it pertains to us as christians praise the lord our behavior or conduct must also be sober our behavior and conduct must also be sober first peter chapter 1 verse 13 to 16 first peter chapter 1 verse 13 to 16 the bible says therefore get up your loins guide up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former laws as in your ignorance. But as he who has called you is what? Holy. You also be holy in your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So we must be self-controlled. We must be self-controlled. We must not be controlled by hysteria. We must not be uh, you know, controlled by uncontrollable outbursts of emotion or fear or characterized by, which is characterized most times by irrationality. Uh, we uh, must make sure that we are sober. We have to have a sober spirit that is poised and stable our behavior or conduct our behavior or conduct is our light and it must be excellent it must be excellent among unbelievers it must be excellent among unbelievers first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 and verse 12 the bible says having your conduct honorable among the gentiles and when they speak against you as evildoers they may be by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are under observation as a Christian. You are always under observation. Because the enemy is observing you in the spirit and in the, in, in the flesh. Those that have not accepted Jesus are also observing you. So, our behavior and conduct, we need to pray to the Holy Spirit. It must be excellent among those that have not believed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The final point there before we move to the turn point of the message is that our behavior or conduct must be like Jesus we need to be like Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is the name that we bear. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we need to be like Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you which was what? In Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. A guy king. There's a guy called Guy King, you know, has described the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ as, as this. So let this mind be, you're asking yourself, okay, what kind of mind was in the life of Christ Jesus? So this person said that the mind of Jesus was a selfless mind. It was a selfless mind who would go for us. That's what God asked and he volunteered and said, um, send me and I'll be, I'll be that sacrifice. He had a sacrificial mind. That is the reason why he laid down his life and then took it up again so that we can have a bridge that brings us back to the Father. He said, I am the way. 
the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but through me. He had a sacrificial mind. First I said he had a selfless mind. He had a sacrificial mind. And he had a serving mind. The Lord Jesus consistently taught about others. And he always had compassion on the people. To the point that he even gave us a prayer point and said that we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest so that he will send forth more laborers into his house so that we can do the work of God. Praise the Lord. Brethren, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Whether it is witnesses of people around us, whether it is witnesses of those that have run the race before us and they have gone to heaven, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 and verse 2. I'm going to read that and move into our third point. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. It said, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author, the originator and finisher, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we still here? May the light of God's, per, God's uh, person and presence forge our conduct on the hot coals of the altars of heaven in Jesus' name. And may, may our behaviors become the light that witnesses to the world in Jesus' name. Third point, our light is our witness. Our light is our witness. We have seen that our conduct is our light. So we're going to look at another point now. Our light, our light is our witness. Let your light so shine before men. That's what we saw in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they will see our good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. So Good work is your light. So our light is our witness. So how does the light of God in us become the witness to the world? I'm going to look at some points very, very, very quickly. How does the light of God, how do we practicalize it from the life of Isaac as we see how his conduct became light and how that his conduct became a witness to the Philistines of those days? How does the light of God in us become the witness to the world? The points that we're going to look at, I will elaborate as much as I can within the time that I have, is the covenant. We see that he had a covenant with God. He had a covenant and he was killed into the Abrahamic covenant and he was a benefactor of that blessing. We see from the text that we have been studying since the past three weeks that he was obedient. We also see, because he was told, uh, not to go to Egypt and to stay in Gera and to stay where he was supposed to stay. And in verse 6, we see that he stayed. So we also see truth. We see, we'll see faith. We'll see industry. We'll see a multidimensional wealth. These are ways that our, our light, the light that is in us, can become a witness to the world through the life of Isaac. We also see that he was a man of peace. He was consecrated. He was persistent. And he witnessed through worship. Praise the Lord. First point there I'm going to look at. So we become, uh, the first point there is the covenant. We become beneficiaries of a better covenant than the, we, we have become beneficiaries of a better covenant than the Abrahamic covenant by faith in Jesus Christ. So when we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, it, it, it traverses or surpasses all the covenants that we have seen in the Bible. We can see that in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. The Bible says there, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also a mediator, also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A Griffith Thomas, he is an Anglican cleric, he said something. He said the covenant is better because it is absolute. It is not conditional. It is spiritual, not carnal. It is universal, not local. It is eternal, not temporal. It is individual, not national. It is internal, not external. So, 
We shine our light to the nations by becoming people of the covenant. So you begin to shine the light of Jesus Christ first by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you have not accepted Jesus, you need to make that relationship with him so that the light of God can start passing through you to the world. Praise the Lord. We shine our light to the nations by becoming people of obedience. We shine our light to the nations by becoming people of obedience. God said to Isaac, dwell in Gerah. That's in verse 3. I'm not going to read that. And Isaac dwelt in Gerah. We see that also in verse 6. So he was obedient. When God told him not to go, he did not go. And Paul was also the same. Because Paul, in Acts chapter 26 and verse 19, he said, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So the question you have to ask yourself, if you're a Christian, he said, are you obedient to God? Because obedience is your witness. Praise the Lord. When you obey, when God said go, and you go. When God said go and preach, and you go and preach, what happens? Or your obedience becomes that witness. Because you are going for what God has said go. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all the nations. You go, you become a witness. Your obedience becomes that witness. Praise the Lord. So we shine our light to the nations by becoming people of truth. We shine our light to the nations becoming, by becoming people of truth. So contrary to Isaac's timidity and lies at the initial stages of his life in verse 7 to verse 11 that we have covered some weeks ago, we must tell the truth always. Because he was accosted by Abimelech and they, or by the people of the land. Oh, who is this beautiful woman by you? And he said, ah, the beautiful woman is my sister. Oh, ah, please don't look in this direction. Praise the Lord. But the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord, but, the, but he was, his, his sin found him out. So when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32, I will not read. Isaac's sin found him out. When he was in trial, he was on trial before Abimelech because Abimelech called him. Abimelech was looking through his window one day and saw them doing something that I should not be saying here on the pulpit. But, and because of that, they called them for trial. And his sins found him out. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 33. Verse 23. 32 verse 23. Sin will find everyone out. Praise the Lord. So that is why... For us to shine our light to the nations, we must become people of truth. For us to shine our light to the nations, we must become people of faith. We must become people of faith. You saw him, he was timid at first. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says what? That the righteous are as what? They are as bold as a lion. Praise the Lord. But God has not given us what? He has not given us a spirit of fear. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So we need to shine our light in faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we need to shine our light. I'm saying a lot of points here in this message. We need to shine our light to the nations by becoming people of industry. By becoming people of industry. So... You see, Isaac. Isaac sold the land. He was an industrial, industrious farmer. He was an industrious well digger. Today, he might be a geologist. He was constantly digging, constantly farming. So we must not be lazy people. Even in our places and profession, we cannot say because we believe in God and we go to our places of work and we laze around. We need to become people of excellence, just like he was a person of excellence. We must become industrious in our professional lives as well as in our spiritual lives and service. We cannot become a light to the nations and embrace the spirit of mediocrity. Because in the place of work, if you are not showing industry, and they say, ah, he's always lazing around, and he calls himself a Christian, you've just, you've just blocked people from becoming Christians. Praise the Lord. You must become a person of Excellent. So also when we do business, we also must become people of honesty. I'm not going to read that scripture, but it's in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1, where it talks about dishonest skills is an abomination unto the Lord. So we must shine our light to the nations by becoming people of multidimensional wealth and witness. Multidimensional wealth and witness. We can shine our light to the nations via multidimensional wealth. What do I mean by that? We are wealthy physically, spiritually, materially, just as God wants us to be. There's a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to read all of them, but Psalm chapter 35 and verse 27 says, Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause? And let them say continually, 
Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. The Bible says that money answereth all things. It answer all things because when we have wealth, we are able to use it for the kingdom of God. But there's also other things that the Bible also says about money. So we, we can use our money to expand the kingdom of God. We can see that in First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or, that's, or proud or to trust in uncertain riches, but the living God who gives us, rich, uh, gives us richly all things to enjoy. Praise the Lord. So the way we conduct ourselves become, with money can become toxic, toxic if we worship money. Just like Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 16 and verse 33, that we should not worship money. We can either have God, we, we cannot serve two masters. We can either serve God or serve money. Praise the Lord. So we can... We can shine our light to the nations using multi-dimensional wealth. God also wants our souls to prosper. Third John chapter uh, 1 and verse 2. I have just a few more points. I know I'm taking some time, but um, we shine our light to the nations by becoming people of peace. We shine our light to the nation by becoming people of peace. We see in the life of Isaac. That when he was in the midst of the Philistines, you know, he experienced contention and he called the name of the place Essek. He experienced opposition and he called the name of the place Sitna. He just everywhere he was experiencing opposition, but he kept on moving forward. He was a man of peace and God has called us to peace. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, it says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm rounding up. Um, another point, another point I'm going to cover here is consecration. For us, for us to, for us to shine our light to the nations, we must become people that are consecrated. And we see it in the life of Isaac. What happened? When he was opposed in one area, he moved. He separated himself. When he was opposed in another area, he moved. He separated himself. Isaac departed from the Philistines. He kept on departing from the Philistines. And God is telling us to consecrate our life. Consecration is separation. We need to separate ourselves to the service of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we need to also shine our light to the nation's true persistence. We see it in the life of Isaac. He was opposed. He moved. He consecrated himself. He moved. He kept on moving. He was persistent. Some people, when we experience opposition, we get tired. And we say, oh man, this is too much. And we got to stop. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the last point in this point is worship. It's worship. We need to worship God. We need to worship God. When we are worshiping God, we are telling the people of the world that God is our God and we are here for him and we are praising him and we witness for him through our worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The last point, I will just cover it in like two or two minutes. The nations will see our light. When our conduct becomes what? Light. And when that our conduct that has become light we now use it to witness to the world and we show the world um, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And we see it in our text, Genesis chapter 26 from verse 26 to 31. I'm not going to read all that text because of our time, but we see that they came to Isaac. Abimelech with the great entourage, they came to Isaac. Abimelech and Phicol and the company of his friends went to see Isaac. So when, uh, when, when the way of a man pleases the Lord. He will even make your enemies to be at peace with you. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 17 says that when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. So he questioned their intentions. This will remember the timid Isaac initially that could not tell the truth. Now he questioned, he questioned uh, their intentions boldly. You know, different from the Isaac that we saw in the, different, in the earlier verses that we have studied before. He said, who was timid and lied about his uh, wife being the sister, purporting that the wife was the sister. So we must ask the Holy Spirit to encourage our witness, to help us in our witness, to become bold in our witness, to spread the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ in boldness. So the righteous is as bold as a lion, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. In Isaac's sake, in the Isaac's case, you know, with his enemies wanting to make peace, 
Isaac was quick to respond, turning the occasion into a celebration. We should borrow a leaf from Isaac here and be just as receptive to those who want to patch, patch things up with us. You know, sometimes we have issues with people, and if those people are willing to patch things up with us, we need to be like Isaac, because we are men and women of peace in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So when God influences, uh, when God's influence in our lives begins to attract people, even our enemies, we must take the opportunity to reach out to them with God's love. Praise the Lord. Covenant attracts covenant. When we shine our light, uh, people will come. When you shine the light, you, you know, Jesus Christ is funny at times. He said, if you light a lamp, you don't put it under a bushel. If you put it under a bushel, it will burn your house down. Praise the Lord. So he said, we need to shine our light and we need to experience and, and share the word of God and keep shining our light. So shining your light is like blowing a trumpet. I'm rounding up in like one minute. Spreading the gospel. Spreading, spreading the gospel. Failure to do this can land some people in hell. I'm going to read a scripture and we'll close with that particular um, scripture. Um, Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 1 to 11. Praise the Lord. After I read the scripture, we'll just go ahead and round up. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, Speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring a sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own hand. Or on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. Verse 6. But if, if, if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. If you know what is good and you don't do it, it's sin unto you. Praise the Lord. Verse 7, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear the word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, wicked O wicked man, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. The wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Praise the Lord. Our light is supposed to be a witness. Let us not make witnessing, let's stand on our feet. Let us not make witnessing complicated. Let us not make witnessing complicated. Just like they came to Isaac and he accepted them and he embraced them. Praise the Lord. Isaac could have chosen to call them out on their on the mistake and all the lies. You know, they manifested envy against him. They filled the wells of his father. They insulted him. They stole, they stole um, his springs. They stole his well. Isaac could have chosen to argue with them, and, but he did not do that. He, he made the process a celebration. He made the process a celebration. Praise the Lord. And as they came to him, they feasted in those days where you feast with people that you have issues with, you have sealed the covenant. And they became friends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May the Lord make us light indeed. May the Lord help us. May the Lord make us light. And we begin to talk to God at this time. I know we've taken some time. But the Lord would have us so that we can change our conduct so that we can begin to witness and do his work effectively because we know that the time is short. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. God wants you to be effective for him. He wants you to become 
a, an instrument in his hands. Why don't you talk to God at this time? Begin to talk to God. It's not a time to keep quiet. It is a time to invest in God's presence by speaking to God. Begin to say, Father, I am a light to the world. I want to be a shining light to the world. Say, pray that prayer quickly. Lord, make me a shining light to the world. Make me a shining light in my place of work. Make me a shining light in all my situations. Make me a shining light in every aspect of my life. Begin to pray and say, Father, make my conduct your light. Make my conduct your light. That your light will shine through my conduct. Pray that prayer quickly. That your, that your light, O oh Lord, will shine through our conduct. Begin to pray that prayer very quickly and then begin to pray and say, Father, let my light begin to witness to people. That people will see the light in me. As they saw the light in the life of Isaac and he witnessed to the nations around him. And they came and they wanted to have a covenant with him. Begin to pray and say, Father, let my life witness to people. Let my light and life witness to people. And begin to pray that the nations will begin to see the light of God in our lives. Begin to pray that prayer. Say, Father, let the nations around me, let my neighbors see the light of God in my life. Father, Lord, we say thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We thank you for this opportunity of coming before in your presence. We thank you for your word. Father, Lord, we thank you, O God, because we will be a light to the nations in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we will be a light to the world. Father, our conduct will become your light, O God. Father, Lord, our light will become our witness for you, O God. Father, Lord, we are praying that the nations will see the light of God coming from our lives and just like uh, Abimelech and Phicol and Azuhut came oh lord even unto isaac people will begin to draw near into the house of god near into nearer to us oh god so that we can witness to them everlasting father lord father lord we say thank you because we know that you will do these things in our lives lord let these words not stand against us oh god father lord let the devil not shroud the light in our lives but let it begin to shine brighter and brighter to a perfect day in our lives in jesus name thank you lord because we know you've heard our prayers as we go forth into the week father go in, go with us let your let our lives be light this week oh god Father Lord, and all the weeks that are coming in the future, let our lights continue to shine as light, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've heard our prayers. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we share the grace in fellowship and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus name.